visible upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Please pray with me. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be a blessing in your sight. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I'd have to say I would love to have Isaiah's good news messenger suddenly appear on the scene today. I, for one, am all set with grim tidings. I am so done with bad news. I want someone to show up and share some really good news like the environment is no longer in crisis. We've created an effective vaccine that will be easily produced and readily available. We've uncovered and dealt with the underlying causes of both recent protests and policing issues. I want to hear that at least one of the things that weighs heavily on me has been fixed. I long for tangible good news, an end to some, at least, of the world's problems. And I know that's sort of unrealistic. I also know that ultimately the kind of good news that Isaiah was talking about wasn't simply a fix for that world's problems. Isaiah's good news was richer and deeper than that. What the prophet promised was the restoration of God's people, deep and abiding peace, reconciliation, salvation. But those things weren't instantaneously going to happen, even though the messenger announced them as if they were a current reality. God's people were going to have to wade into difficult times, into a season that would both unravel and stretch them. God's promises would emerge in God's time. 
It's the same good news we're being offered in the midst of today's struggles. This isn't necessarily the news I want to hear, but it may be the news I need as a child of God to hear. It's time to wade into the challenge, to pay attention to what God is doing, to listen to God's call to us. As human beings, when we see an individual, our minds instantly categorize them as part of a group. She's a toddler, he's a teen, she's Asian, he's white, she's old, he's a professor. It's a natural evolutionary process that has served us well. Categorization enabled our ancestors to quickly identify would-be natural predators. The instinct was necessary for human survival and it's served us well. It's a natural ability that has also, at times, failed us. Human beings instinctively place strangers into groups and then pass judgment on an entire group, most often without even thinking that that's happening. In some instances, this instinct is extremely helpful, but sometimes it's not. Assigning strangers to specific groups or communities is akin to what researchers call implicit bias, our underlying tendency to dislike or fear people based on ideas we're not aware we have. I'd like to try a thought experiment with you to illustrate this. I'm gonna name some categories of people, but what I want you to do is in your mind, imagine a single person that fits that category. Here we go. Popular college sorority girl. Toddler. African immigrant. Teacher. Palestinian. So keep those images in mind for a minute, few minutes. I wanted to share a couple stories with you. Mary was part of my college sorority pledge class. Because we were lined up alphabetically whenever we uh, were brought into the room to face active members, Mary stood next to me. She was creative and bold. Nothing intimidated her. She was the most popular person in the room loved by fellow pledges and the active members of the sorority alike. I was timid, knew not a soul in that room, and was convinced that in the end I would be rejected. And to be honest, I was almost afraid of Mary, almost as afraid of her as I was of my pledge boss. I believed that just standing next to her might get me in trouble. Turned out Mary wasn't the callous person I had initially judged her to be. She took me under her wing just because I was standing next to her. She helped me navigate a process I didn't understand and she always made sure I felt as though I belonged there. Eventually, Mary was the person who brought me groceries when I didn't have enough money to buy them for myself and showed up when my toddlers came down with the chicken pox. Popular sorority girl was the label I initially gave her, but she was infinitely more than that. She is loyal, beyond kind, my best friend. Another story. Andy Camara began his life in Sierra Leone. His father was an engineer at a diamond mine and his family lived a comfortable life in a town called Zimi, the gateway between Liberia and Sierra Leone. But when Andy was 13 years old, Charles Taylor and his Liberian army attacked Andy's town 
massacring many of his father's co-workers. Andy's home was burned to the ground. He and his family escaped with only the clothes on their backs. They fled north, attempting to settle in town after town, but rebel forces kept advancing, showering each place with gunfire and committing unspeakable atrocities. Andy's family fled time and again until eventually Andy and two of his sisters were resettled by a host family in Pomfret, Connecticut. That family helped them integrate into life in the U.S. doing things like assisting them in applying for college, learning to drive, finding an apartment. Here in Connecticut, Andy met his wife and started his family. And for the past 10 years, Andy has served as the logistics manor, manager for Odysseia, a nonprofit social enterprise in Providence, Rhode Island, that makes life-saving foods that have nourished over 11 million children in more than 50 countries. Andy is an African immigrant. I feel fortunate to know him because he is so much more than just that. Placing strangers into groups is a natural human process. Yet when we choose to look more deeply, we discover unique gifts, the inherent beauty in individuals. I think it's a choice that we need to make a little more often. It's also harder than ever to do this in our polarized world. Living a more contemplative life, opening up time in our busy schedules, creating space in our imagination, allowing our minds to be stretched and our hearts to be opened, enables us to see others not simply as part of a group, but as unique individuals, God created individuals, beautiful and beloved, capable of working alongside us to create a more just, peaceful world. We've spent the last six weeks engaged in a worship series called Beguiled by Beauty. Each week we've been encouraged to see the beauty around us and to be more contemplative, to spend more time thinking about that beauty. Today we end that six week adventure exactly where we began, acknowledging the importance of a contemplative life. Sitting in a rose garden, contemplating the beauty of a single rose tends to evoke a sense of responsibility for that bloom. We want the plant that produced the rose to thrive so that we can see another blossom. We long to nurture its existence. What begins as receiving, breathing in the scent, observing the delicate petals, sensing beauty, naturally evolves into action, watering, fertilizing, nurture, trimming. This is the gift of contemplation. It evokes compassion, leads to actions that nurture. It may at first seem counterintuitive, inaction leading to justice, but contemplation is a starting point that opens up enormous possibilities. Intentionally seeking beauty is actually a liberating process. First comes the pause, then a connection, and then some renewal of our interior spaces. Experiencing the beauty around us naturally increases our concern for the well being of the world. Contemplation inherently leads to compassion, and compassion leads to acts of justice and care. Groups of people, toddler, teacher, Palestinian, Palestinian. When I say that word, what image does it evoke? Did, did it bring to mind a picture of a gun-wielding, angry, brown-skinned man? Or did you see Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus, 
was a Palestinian Jew. Many thought that he was a dangerous revolutionary, but we have come to know him well. And because our minds and our hearts have been opened by the grace of God, we know Jesus to be God's love incarnate. Friends, I pray that you will allow yourselves to be beguiled by the beauty of God's creation. May contemplation lead you to be more compassionate. All of creation, all creatures are imbued with a spark of the divine. Contemplation enables us to connect with that inner spark, that divine beauty in meaningful ways. May your sense of compassion for others lead you to act justly, to embody and to share good news. The world needs you. Begin now, lean in to God's desired future. Amen. now to the time in our worship when we prepare our hearts to um, share what we would pray for together. Listen um, to this piece of music and consider what you might lift up to God in prayer this morning. Your problems seem too much to bear 
even sure if there's someone who cares. Just look around. Whether stranger, neighbor, family, or friend. On each other in tough times we can depend. Look around. Kindness, love is ours to share. We can see it everywhere. Though it might seem like forever, look around, even in the darkest night. Things are gonna be alright. We'll get through this together. Just look around. I am going to invite Meg to unmute all of you now so that we can share our prayers with one another. I want to remind you all that we are live on Facebook. So um, as you are um, sharing your concerns and your prayers and your celebrations, just know that folks on Facebook are able to see and hear um, what we're saying. <laughs> so what would we lift up to God in prayer this morning, friends? I'd like to lift up the Milton family. They lost their son and their brother yesterday, 24 years old. Oh dear. Okay. Chris is a family as a teacher here in Hampton. Uh, thank you. That's difficult. Where else are we? Go on. Um, yeah. Since uh, between the last time we were on with and now, my my brother had the bit and uh, his his wife had the baby, so they have a healthy baby girl. It's, her name is Riley Castillo. We celebrate the birth of Riley Castillo. And they've been trying for a girl for a long time, so they're very very ecstatic about that. Yeah. How many boys, Mike? How many boys well, in the family? They, they have three, and they adopted two. Um, so they have five boys in the house. The oldest one's nine. So they have a little baby girl and she'll be very well protected. <laughs> I was just going to say, safe to say she'll be a little princess, huh? Yeah. <laughs> also, Mike, do you want to celebrate um, Julie today? Yes. Can we do that? Julie got accepted into each other. Oh, thanks, Pastor Jenny. I <laughs> was accepted into um, the Yukon. Uh, master's program for energy and environmental management. So I'm very excited about the part in the fall. Yeah. Thanks. Where else are we, friends? Celebrations, concerns. For all the people that are so isolated because of everything that's going on. Yes, Renee, yes. Yeah, I think Renee, when all this began, um, I know I had no idea just how long and how deep uh, this would be. And even being able to only see one or two people, which is wonderful, is not the full scope of life that we all had. Absolutely. I attended two memorial services yesterday, both on Zoom, and I have never felt more deeply the longing to hug people, you know, and it was lovely to have the services and to be present, um, people from California to Florida all in one space, but... Um, the hugs weren't there. So thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So where else are we friends? Let's up stand. Um, 
Stan says COVID has caused us to tighten our family circles. Um, and he worries that that can be hard on families. And I think that that can be true. Thanks, Stan. Let's pray. Gracious God, there is beauty all around us, but sometimes the darkness we face makes it hard to see. We lift to you the challenges of this time of COVID, the separations, the isolation, the losses. Oh God, help us to sense and see beauty in the world around us and come to realize that we are called to practice a way of beauty, to offer beauty in good news to others. Oh God, today we celebrate the birth of Riley Castillo. Even as we celebrate a life lost in the Milton family, knowing the depth of their grief, we hope that they are able to celebrate the life that they knew. Merciful God, be present with all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Robin, Marion, Robert, Wayne, and Mary, Jeannie, Lily, Peg, Howard, and Juliana, Phyllis, Amos, Suzanne, Melissa, and Judd, Stephen, Casey, Jess, and Jerry. Oh Lord, we ask that you hear us now as we pray using the words Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Will be done. done. On earth, on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this, give us this day, our day our daily bread. And forgive and us, and forgive us our debts. As we forgive, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the kingdom and, the power. and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's offer each other now a sign of God's peace. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Hi, everybody. Peace, peace be with you. outside on your patios and your porches. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm going after this. Yeah. Good morning, all. Hey, Good morning. Morning. Hey, hey, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> hey, Steph. Good to see you. Good morning, Morris. John and Judy. <laughs> Good morning, Mike. Mike and Mike. Mike and Mike. <laughs> I know we don't really have an announcements time, but uh, I would just like to say that the um, the scouts are trying to keep going with their activities. And last week they spent a good three hours over at Lauder Park at the Grow Wyndham Garden, where they grow vegetables for That's the soup nice. kitchen and folks. And they're going back this week. And they cleaned up at the dump last Tuesday night. So. Um, we're trying to, we're going hiking next weekend. So we're trying to stay active with the scouts outside as we can. We have a lovely community garden now in Hampton on uh, Old Parsonage Road and Old Town Pound as well. Nice. Thank you, Michelle. The, That's good to is know. Is the bottle recycle still on hold? At the oh, dump? no, they reopened, but the people oh. who have been stealing our bottles are back at it. So, um, you know. <laughs> We're trying, but they're disappearing. That is really lousy. <laughs> yeah, unfortunate. So let's um, go back okay, to uh, muting folks and... We will sing together for the beauty of the earth. Thank you. 
The world is so varied and beautiful. Friends, seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And may the goodness of the Creator, the compassion of Christ, and the insight of the Spirit infuse your life this day and every day. Amen. You are all unmuted. Hey, Neil. Good to see you. How are you? Oh, Meg's trying to unmute everybody. You might have to help. You might have to unmute yourself. Yes, you we're doing fine. Good. <laughs> I was going to thank Morris for letting us take half of his rhubarb for strawberry rhubarb pie, which I got two of this year. Oh, man. <laughs> thank you to Morris. <laughs> rhubarb. Oh. Hey, Neil, Neil, I have plenty of rhubarb, so we could make a deal. Oh, okay. We you know, apple pie we for some free rhubarb. <laughs> you let me know. There you go. I love rhubarb. <laughs> Can you unmute um, Morris? Does that do it? Yes, we can hear you. Man, I'm getting good with this machinery. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you all the story I was telling um, the group earlier. Yesterday we had um, yesterday we had um, a memorial service for my mom, and there were about fifty computers. Most of my mom's friends, of course, are octogenarians. And um, it was amazing to see how capable people are of using Zoom now. It was pretty remarkable. Even me. Especially you, Morris. <laughs> Especially you, Morris. Yeah. So it'll be on me.